Welcome back to Talking Lead. This is episode 16. We're finally back at the Talking Lead studio. How's it going, Lefthand? It's going good, man. So what all did you do uh, gun-wise this week? Well, uh, stymied again, man. I mean, I've just been covered up with my, my real job. and uh, This this needs to become our real job. I, I assure you that uh, you need to get away from us. <laughs> <laughs> we have a gentleman here with us, uh, James Yeager. How's it going, James? Great, man. Thanks for coming. Are you James or Jaeger? Uh, everybody, I don't know, people migrate one way or the other. My wife it's, it, my wife calls me Jaeger, so people are kind of weirded out by that. But I, <laughs> I don't really care. I think she was with you at that, uh, that thing in uh, the rally. The rally that yeah. she was calling. I thought she was just one of your groupies. Uh, well, I mean, <laughs> my groupies are usually 50 year old fat dudes or 14 year old Filipino <laughs> chicks. Uh, they're usually not any attractive ladies that. Uh, <laughs> they want to get their picture with me. So when we see the attractive lady with you, it's your wife. What's that? If when we see the attractive lady with you, it's your wife. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Gotcha. Or I'm in trouble. So, <laughs> <laughs> or we need to keep our mouth shut. You know, particularly exciting. I got some new holsters in from uh, from uh, Della Rosa, a uh, guy in Clarksville that uh, he was actually at the rally too. Uh, that, that, that David Della Rosa makes uh, some holsters and uh, got got some stuff for uh, M and P from him and playing with it and some other stuff and and. You know, we just moved into our new building, so I'm still unpacking stuff, and you know, it's just been busy the last couple of weeks. Did I just hear you said got some for an MMP? Yeah. That not a Glock 19? No, not a Glock 19. Really? <laughs> yeah, I know that freaks people out, but when people give me guns, I tend to take them. And and uh, and, um, and Smith and Wesson sent me this MMP. It's got from the factory two barrels, one's threaded for suppressor, and and uh, you know, I got my little shield on my if. It, any folks watch my YouTube stuff, but I got that little shield now with nearly 10,000 rounds through it, and then it's just running like a champ. But I'm just glad that there's finally a American-made pistol that I can tell people they can buy and trust their life to. Nice. And when when Smith and Wesson makes a Glock 19 size um, pistol, then then I then I will I will not be a Glock guy. Convert. Cool. Smith and Wesson, if you heard that. <laughs> oh, oh, trust me, they, they've heard it from me. <laughs> we'll be honest with you, Dan and I had a little back and forth with this. Uh, back when you had that little video that a lot of people heard about, you know, we may not go into detail, but it's a little controversial. Oh, yeah. Got, got stirred a few pots. <laughs> you, know? you know, basically... And that's not a bad thing. No. Not yeah, yeah you know, I don't think it's a bad thing. It was one of those things where, you know, when it happened, we were, we'd already scheduled an interview with you and we're I was kinda like, oh my gosh, you got a kid he's going to prison. Well we're yeah, like, okay, yeah. we can we can reschedule him. Yeah, it was just kinda like oh, we gotta get somebody for this spot. What is this garbage? And then you know, it got heated and more heated and then all of a sudden they, they took your the state the state did it, right? They took uh -huh. your handgun carry program away. Uh, so you know, then we had to cancel the interview and for honestly for a minute there, I was like, whew, <laughs> we, we dodged that bullet. And then, you know, well, come on now. You mean, know left hand, really? yeah, but then we met you. We met you at one of the Second Amendment rallies. I mean, uh, but did he say anything that none of us weren't thinking? Seriously. Here, here's this the thing. is going to go on the internet. <laughs> here, 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 here's the thing. Here's the thing. People, people, people have improper thoughts all the time. I'm not yeah. saying that what he said was proper. So, so basically, it's what not I want anybody else wasn't thinking. You my know, big question in a roundabout way. My big question was, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> here's the thing. A lot of a lot of people that didn't like what I had to say told me I needed to calm down. And, uh, and gun guys will appreciate this. If you if you if you're not, if you're a gun guy, you've seen the movie Boondock Saints. Oh yeah. And you may remember the the one two. <laughs> you might remember the scene where Rocco from one uh, goes into the diner and kills those guys, and he comes back to the apartment. He's all freaking out. He's out of here and all that stuff. <laughs> and uh, they were telling him to calm down. He said, the cat. He, said, he said he said he said listen, you need to calm down, Rocco. And he said you need to start getting effing excited. <laughs> and that's how I feel about it. Yeah, I think I think it's time. I think it's time for us to yell. Maybe not say the things I said, but I think it's time for us to be mad. I right. think it's time for us to yell, and I think it's time to get excited. So was it, it one of the, is. was it one of those moments where the brain, the mouth filter just kind of went? I, I was I was really really mad, and uh, and certainly you know if I could do it all over again, you know I might I might change what I said. But the thing is, the the unintended consequence from that video. Was I got floods of emails and letters, like 
on paper letters from high school and college kids saying they played your video in our constitutional law class and we've talked about it for four days. Wow. So I believe that, and that, that video is played all over the world, you know, on, on a lot of news agencies, and I believe it sparked a discussion in this country, even though it was a very negative video, it sparked a uh, discussion in this country. I mean, people were talking about it in diners and, and saying, okay, what are we going to do? What is going to happen? Obviously, they're talking about it in schools as, as well. So, yeah. I mean, I, so it, it, got the, it got a message out there that, or at least it's a game people have been trying, you know? trying to avoid, but you know, by you, it, whether it was intentional or unintentional, or you know, I'm sure it was inadvertent. Like you said, if you had to do over again, you'd probably do it a little differently. But it, you know, it got people thinking, right? Talking and talking, right? What's probably the biggest thing you've taken from this experience? I have a First Amendment right to say whatever I want. I just need to watch my damn mouth. <laughs> it's been a while since I've seen the video, but from from what I recall. Uh, you know, it was the the way that you were, you know, you, if somebody comes after your guns, you know, and tries to, um, Take uh, well, I was, I would say impede on your Second Amendment right, uh, then you would, you know, protect yourself and, and your rights, and you would kill them, you would shoot them. Right. You know, you, you weren't directing it at anyone, you're not saying, I'm going to go out and shoot and kill this you know, individual, and this individual or these people. There was it's also, like if they come and they invade my territory, then I, I have a right to defend myself. But there was also a prefix, if it goes any further. Mm -hmm. But again, I, it's the First Amendment right. You know, you well, have a right now, as long as it's not, 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 not... At no point in time did I stand behind the First Amendment. At no point in time did I say it was my right to say that. Never. Because I understand that I did run into a theater and I did yell fire. So not not once have I ever stood behind the First Amendment. I, I realize what I did. Well, but I mean at the same time, you know, you look at these, these gun grabbers and these and yeah, it, they're hypocritical. Because anytime that anything's said along these lines that's not, you know, in their realm then they're bashing, they're name calling. I mean, if you look at the Piers Morgan video, the one that said this will be the, the end of Piers Morgan, mm -hmm. you know, what does he say with his microphone? He goes, you know, I wish, you know, I'd, I'd replace all the microphones with oh, uh, replace with the M16, buzzers. Yeah. the buzzers with M16, and yeah. shoot all of them and kill all of them. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did, right. did anybody, did anything come of that? Did they go try to revoke his press pass, you know, because he said that? No, no they didn't. You know, so it's, it's a double standard that they've got. Uh, and uh, it's ridiculous. I think I, I think I'm just scary, and that's why they took it seriously. It's the goatee, man. <laughs> it's the goatee. <laughs> yeah. See if you had hair, clean shaven, and no like pads, a, like a mullet. They're like, oh, like he's like Piers Morgan. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny too because I, I, the last couple of years, two times I've been picked for strong arm robberies. <laughs> you say, yeah, and like, like uh, last for, year, for kind of, uh, last year coming out of the NRA convention, a guy tried to mug me. <laughs> I'm like, like they you, they right. picked you out of a crowd. Yeah, of <laughs> that's a, that guy. I just, I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. Apparently, they wanted to test themselves. <laughs> that's what it was. <laughs> well, I, I, they were looking for easy targets. I think uh, my wife. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'll say this too. You know, through all that rigmarole and you know the the chaos. That ensued afterwards. You know, we met you at the Second Amendment rally, and we've got close friends that know you and uh, that are close friends with you also. And they've told us, you know, he's a humble guy. He's a nice guy. He just, you know, said the wrong thing, and he knows he said the wrong thing. And when we met you, I was like, you know what? He really is it's, a nice guy. It's not even that you said it. It's you. You recorded it, and put it on YouTube. <laughs> right, right. You press. You press. I don't think I said anything wrong. I said. It. I just think I said it the wrong place. Yeah. What do you think the best thing for you that has come out of that? Um, the best thing is uh, I've become a pariah. I am hated now by the left and the right. And that's, <laughs> that's what, the best thing. And that's <laughs> why I like being. I, say, I call that video a friend-defining opportunity because I found out who my friends were. They're they're oh, they're, sure. they're instructors like you know like like uh, Pincus and Marty Hayes and, and guys like that, that that said hey you know maybe I wouldn't have said it that way but I'm st sticking by my friend and then I, there are other trainers who I won't name that that, that abandoned me you know pretty right, quick like the play, right? and so and so I, I mean I think it was I mean I really appreciate that now I don't have to worry about it <laughs> <laughs> no. it does take situations like this to make your friends either come out of the woodwork or go 
crawling back into the hole, you know. And it's funny because people ask me, like, hey, when did you beat your wife or whatever? I go, oh, I met her when I was working undercover. And then I just keep talking about something else. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't on the job, but I, I just let people's imagination kind of wander with it. But anyway. Yeah, right. You train yeah. contractors too, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, we, that, that's some of our most popular classes, is the, the contractor training classes. And it's funny, about about a third of the guys are current or uh, police or military that are looking to retire and go into contracting. About a third of them are former police and military that are current contractors, but maybe they're home on leave or they're between contracts and want to stay sharp. And about a third of them are civilians that never want to contract, but they see the classes and they look like fun, and they've mm -hmm. done it. They've done everything else, right? And so they feel adrenaline junkies. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, like you, you train and train and train, and you know, like what's the next high? You know, I don't that? know anybody that would want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody <laughs> sitting on this with two thumbs, <laughs> this guy. <laughs> well, it's a date. Whenever you guys get ready. Yeah, we're coming think, to the, uh, we, the yeah. we got fighting pistol booked. You yeah. gotta take that one for a trip. We don't, we don't actually set anything on fire or blow anything up in fighting pistol. No, I gotcha. So we tone that down. But that's like your, <clears throat> that's your starting way. That'll be yeah. a good acclamation for us, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, if you were going to say, hey, I want to take one class from you, what should it be? I'm never going to take another class, I'd say fighting pistol. And then uh, another question we ask of every guest. Music, music video, movie, pop culture. Okay, um, video best, game. Best video ever made, and I will fight anybody that disagrees with me. Is Beastie Boys Sabotage? <laughs> it's got guns. I, I will, I will fist fight anybody. It right now. It's, it's <laughs> one of my favorite groups. I love the Beastie Boys. I like, uh, I like rock and rap. Uh, you know, I'm a child of the '80s, and uh, and um, I mean everything. Soundgarden, and you know, I mean. So what about Something's what about like, movies? Everything. I'm a I'm a movie nut. Um, my, my wife and I go to the movies a lot. We we really enjoy that. And uh, and uh, what's your what's your favorite go to movie? It has guns in it. It's got it. Be, better than they that. don't have to involve. No 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 no. Yeah, no, 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 no. Listen. <laughs> better than that. My wife and my Christmas movie mm -hmm. is Die Hard. <laughs> we watch it. We watch it every Christmas. You know, Perfect. It, 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 but think about how many action. But think about how many action movies happen at Christmas. Die Hard one and two. Uh, Lethal Weapon happens at Christmas. Yeah. Long Kiss Goodnight. That's a sleeper that a lot of people haven't seen. With Gina Davis, great movie. Oh, yeah. oh yeah, um, yeah. But there's a Sammy lot of well, Jackson, yeah, yeah, a lot, lot of lot of Christmas action movies that people that don't. <laughs> <laughs> your favorite your favorite movie with guns. All right. So I got to ask about. Okay, go ahead and get your favorite one. Oh, uh, man, that's, uh, I don't know. You can do um, the old westerns? Yeah, I like, a, I like a, lot, a lot of the old westerns. You know, um, like, probably my favorite movie, period, is Seven Samurai, a uh, Kurosawa movie. And if you haven't seen uh, Seven Samurai, you got to see it. But The Magnificent Seven was the cowboy yeah, version. Of it. And so, I, so I, that's my favorite western because of yeah. yeah. So it's you kind of look like you. <laughs> well, <laughs> I look like every other bald white dude. <laughs> I actually trained uh, Jeremy Renner for, really? for her, her locker. Did you really? Yeah. Wow. Sweet. Did he come to Tennessee? Did you go no, to I, went out to, I went out to L.A. and we've actually become friends. Uh, L.A. <laughs> uh, and uh, we've actually become friends and, and um, he's a real he, he pretty cool guy. Yeah. <laughs> he actually is a nice guy. We, it, here's a funny story. I was out there a couple months ago and, and just me and him went and rented a range and were shooting pistol and uh, half a dozen people came up while we were shooting asking to get pictures from people are asking Jeremy Renner to take a picture of me and him. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy is awesome. awesome. Well here's the thing, awesome. he, he was he was in that uh, demand a plan commercial. Yeah. And so everybody that knew I knew him was like yelling at me, rah, 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 you yeah. know, tell him this and tell him that of course I'm not going to, right? Right. Mm -hmm. He's a gun guy, okay? And I don't know what the, the story was with that. But uh, then my thing blew up. And he sent me a text. He said, "Oh, bro, I thought I caused a lot of problems." <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I said, "I said, I hope you got half as much crap as I got." You should have told him. You said, "Hey, I did that for your benefit to take the heat off you." Yeah. <laughs> hey, that, that's what you can claim now. Just say, "Hey, I did it." That that took one for you. You know, and one thing I want to mention. I mentioned in one of our other shows, and it was around the time that that video happened. And it's kind of my philosophy on the whole thing, and not necessarily now that I've met you. I mean, I have a whole different outlook on it. Mm -hmm. Um, but if you the analogy I used was if you're on a basketball team, there's not going to be 15 guys on that team that you love and you want to hang out with every day, but you're on a team. And if 
like this situation, we're in a Second Amendment battle. I mean, we, we literally, literally are. And every now and then, one of those guys throws up a brick. And you're going to be like, oh my God, why can't I can't believe you, stupid idiot, I hate you, blah, blah, blah. But he's still on your team. You can't do that. You've got to embrace him and say, okay, we've all got a common goal. And we're going to go forward with that goal. And, and so that's kind of the viewpoint I take with it. I mean, I, I like that. I yeah. like that viewpoint. And, you know, if that teammate's on a brick every time, <laughs> they should be on the team. Right. you got you got to give a guy a brick every once in a while. Exactly. Right? I've, I've shot many air balls in my time. <laughs> and I've been cussed out by many of my teammates. But, you know, they embrace me and we take off and we keep going. We win the game. And, and that's the way, if, if there's people out there that are you're hearing you on the show and they're thinking, I can't believe they brought James Jagger on the show. <laughs> no, he's part of the team. He's pro second man. He's pro gun. Um, you may not agree with everything he says or has said, but you need to embrace every single person that's in this battle with us. Well, if we look at the last revolution, the guy that kept standing up going, you know who else we need to kill? Was uh, Samuel Adams. They couldn't oh, shut that guy up. <laughs> and he ended up making awesome beer. <laughs> if I drank, I would drink his beer. But, uh, but you know, um, that there has to be, you know, everybody's like, you got to stay quiet. You know, um, I, I disagree. I mean, what if Paul Revere would have stayed quiet? Um, sure. I, I believe that people need to say stuff. Maybe not like I said it, but, but we have to talk, we have to communicate, and we have to, we have to share ideas and, and, uh, and messages. And, and, and the only way you can do that is by talking. Most definitely.